Hello, my name's Tom and welcome back to Garage Time. Today, we're gonna tackle the fuel system and the fuel lines. Garage Time. Last week, I focused on the electrical harness that goes through the tunnel from front to rear. And that's ready to go in the car, it's restored. So I'm also today working on things that go through the tunnel, which are the fuel lines, and the brake lines as well. I'm not sure I'll get to the brake lines today, but there's a lot to do on the fuel. Okay, these are the original fuel lines that came out of my car, and these are plastic. I think it's actually nylon, which is for 1974 only. This was a really bad material, so I needed to replace it anyways. But I took these out when I was working on lowering the front seats and making some new seat mounts. This side is the front of the car, and you can see there's two different sizes. The larger size actually is not to the engine. The larger size is to the tank. So this is the suction line. In my car, 1974, the fuel pump was located in the rear, back towards these lines. So it exits the tunnel right about here, and then this went up past the seat pans over to where the fuel pump is, right near the rear torsion bar. I'm gonna re be replacing these plastic lines with stainless steel lines, and I have two different sizes. This is 3 8 inch tube, and yes, it's uh, imperial sizes. But I'm gonna be using some AN fittings because everything I'm gonna do to this fuel system is going to be aftermarket or custom. Now I gotta figure out how to straighten this tube. I have no idea if this is gonna work. I measured the original tubing and I think I wanna make this about 64 inches straight all the way through. I made this about three or four inches too long because the ends might be hard to straighten. Okay, my, my tubing cutter is not quite as sharp as it should be, but it did a pretty decent job on this stainless steel. So this is 304 annealed stainless steel for automotive purposes. So even though it's hard to straighten and it's hard to work with, it is the softest of the stainless steels.
All right, that was a lot harder than I expected to straighten out this tube. Stainless is just not easy to work with, and once it gets bent a little too far, it's pretty much impossible to get all the little kinks out of it. But it's straight enough for a fuel tube. You know, you can see it rolling on the table. It's, it's definitely not perfectly straight. Especially the ends, but the ends are gonna get cut off anyways because I made it too long as it is. So the ends are especially wobbly because it's just hard to get any grip on those. So it's easier just to uh, cut those off. The only way to make this tube uh, straighter would be to use the correct tool, which is like a roller, roller bearing sort of set of dies that you, you progressively you know, cycle the tube in and out. I was trying to do that, but my table was moving and it was gripping onto the wood. So you need ball bearings and you need shaped dies and you need to you know, do it right. But for a fuel tubing that goes inside the tunnel, I mean, this is just fine. I didn't want to spend the money on that tool. Guys, I also did look into buying pre-straightened tube and it's expensive to find it in the length that I need and also in the right material. I wanted the annealed condition so it could be flared on the end. So with shipping, it would have been extremely expensive to get that tube, like three or four times the price. So I did DIY. However, I did spend money on this flaring kit. This is presumably one of the best flaring kits there is and it can do all sorts of different operations, including the brake lines. So this wasn't cheap, but I think I don't want my fuel lines or brake lines to leak. So this is where I spent the money. Okay, the instructions recommend a little dab of anti-seize compound. Okay, on this side of the fuel line, this is from the gas tank side, I did something a little different and I used a male fitting. The reason for that is because this side that has the female portion, this nut is too big to actually go through the car. It has to snake through the tunnel and then there's some uh, holes in the bulkhead and this is just too big in diameter. So I'm gonna feed this in from the back the complication here is that this fitting is not an AN fitting. So I got to use an adapter on the end of this, which is, will be here tomorrow. And that is going to hopefully not leak. Now there is some differences between this flare and the AN flare. This is 45 degrees and the AN is 37 degrees. So I'm hoping that all this goes together without any leaks. I'm going to be checking that before I get too far. But now it's time to make the return side. The return side is gonna be made of slightly smaller tubing. This is 5 16 tubing. You kind of see the difference here. This is returning back to the fuel pump. I'm not gonna be using the stock fuel pump and I'm not gonna use the stock fuel pump location either. There are some problems with having the fuel pump in the rear of the car. There's heat back there and today's fuels, they have a little bit of ethanol in them. They're more volatile, they tend to evaporate more quickly, so you get what's called vapor lock. So it's better to have the fuel pump closer to the tank. In fact, the best thing to do is put the fuel pump inside the tank, which is what I'm gonna do. So that means I don't need a large line going on the suction side of the fuel pump because the fuel pump will be in the tank. 
So I can use the larger line to supply the engine and then whatever's not used by the engine will get returned through the 5 16 tubing. This 5 16 tubing was just a little bit easier to straighten, still not uh, arrow straight. Probably could have done just as well of a job with my uh, bending it on my leg. But anyways, it's now straight, so I'm going to put fittings on this one. This will be the return line. This fitting for the tank side just arrived, and the threads are right, and this is the AN fitting. Remember, this is an adapter between the uh, male fitting on the tube and I want to have AN fittings going to the fuel pump or into the fuel tank. So these screw together, although th the something, there's something is not quite right. There's a little bit of, it's just not tightening down on the flare. So when I open this up and look at it, I notice the inside of this fitting has a very shallow cone and the flare is just not deep enough or not thick enough in order for it to clamp down onto the flare. So the nuts aren't supposed to contact each other. This cone is supposed to contact the actual tubing. And it just doesn't seem like it's tightening down right. I don't want to just force it down. If something seems wrong, it's probably wrong. So I'm going to investigate. I think the right thing to do on this, this fitting is probably designed for the double flare. So I'm gonna try a double flare and see if it tightens up any better. I've just experimented with the double flare and I like it much better. Here's how it looks. So you can see the way that the flare really protrudes much further than the nut now. So now when this piece goes on, even finger tight, it's already clamping on the tube. Now this is pushing the limits of this tool. You know, 3 8 is the largest it can do and it's stainless steel, which is also the toughest material. So I'm having to pull really, really hard on this, but it's holding up just fine. Let's hope it doesn't leak. I bought an AN fitting cap right here, just to be able to pressure test this. And then over here, I also have an AN fitting, but then I have some hardware store stuff just so I can attach my air, air hose. And there's bubbles. This is 125 PSI. And it looks like it's leaking from the AN cap. It's leaking on the AN cap. So I didn't tighten these super tight. So I'm going to go ahead and torque this down a little bit more. I think for the AN, it's like like 12 foot pounds of torque or something, which is basically just, you know, using your hands on the wrench. Let's check it out. So I just gave it another probably eighth of a turn, you know, not super over tight because these are aluminum fittings. You don't want to overdo it, but let's see if that stopped it. Fully pressurized and all the bubbles are gone. So this is really cool. Okay, this is the other end and this is where the hose attaches. Okay, all the bubbles are coming from the coupler and not the, I'm really concerned about this junction right here. And I don't see any bubbles coming out of that one. So I think the flare is okay. I think this nut's okay. It's really all this adapter here and mostly this quick coupler. Okay, here's a quick look. I disconnected this uh, to take a look at it and there's no uh, marking or any deformation of the fittings, which means I didn't over tighten it. And the flare still looks good. This one works really well. You know, you can see how these two go together. These are both 37 degrees and everything looks really nice. I don't have any uh, hesitation now to put this in the car. Okay, the worst possible scenario is to put this in the car, transmission engine in the car, and then you start it up and there's a leak. Now, you can't remove this line with the transaxle or engine installed, so you really want to test it beforehand. I'm glad I did, and I, that's why I'm checking the fittings to make sure that if I do one more 
tightening cycle on it. It's not scoring or damaging the fittings because I want this to work in the car once and done. Okay, and just like that, we have the 5 16 and 3 8 lines done. This is the end with the double flare. And yes, I did make extra lines. Not that this car will ever need any fuel line replacements. This stainless steel should last forever. But I am going to make another set uh, probably offered for sale so I can help pay for some of that expensive uh, flaring tool. Okay, I don't recommend a lot of specialty tools for working on your car, but I would recommend this one. And you don't have to buy it from Eastwood. In fact, it's a little cheaper on Amazon under a different name. So in fact, I bought this alternate uh, die set from Amazon. This is the 37 degree version. It's just got different labeling, but it's the exact same tool made for Eastwood, presumably. So I'm gonna put a link in the description for both the extra 37 degree die and also the tool itself. And it's an affiliate link, which means if you buy it, then I get a small commission. Or for that matter, if you buy anything on Amazon within 24 hours, I might get a few bucks. The next questions are likely, Tom, how are you going to connect the fuel lines to the fuel tank? Or how are you gonna get the fuel pump inside the fuel tank? Okay, this fuel tank is from an earlier car and it has these huge fittings. See some rust, some rust is falling out of this one. So I can certainly adapt to these or weld in my, my own uh, fittings to get the connections. This looks like it might just be a drain. I'll likely just plug this one. The more interesting thing about this tank is if I'm gonna put a fuel pump in it, it needs to be in this sort of lower section right here. This is upside down at the moment. So this portion is the lowest part of the tank. Probably right here is the lowest part of the tanks. But when you flip it over, that location is right about where the spare tire is. This is where the spare tire goes, and this is where the sending unit goes. And here's the fuel tank that came out of my car, and you can see it's got some extra features dented into it. Major damage. I think they picked up my car with a forklift when they went to move it out from where they found it. So this gas tank is pretty well destroyed. Also, the fuel pickups on this tank are totally different. So the newer tank already looks like it used a space saver tire. And even though the filler pickups are the same, this one looks like it has a much larger capacity for fuel. And it might be easier to modify because it has an area right here. This area right here might be a good place to drill for the fuel pump. Whereas on this tank, there's not a great place to drill. Here's a spare tire. There's still plenty of space between the tire and the tank. And as you can see on this tank with the same tire, it's much tighter to the tank. Okay, the early tank, this black one, weighs about four pounds less than the gray one. And I'm really trying to decide which one to use. Both require a fair amount of work. So this is what I would do to this tank. I would just create a little bulge in this area where I have this notepad. So I would, uh, you know, cap this off, make it, you know, I have to weld all the way around, cap it off, and then come up with a similar sort of bung here that would just go adjacent to it. And the fuel pump would, would drop in right here this tank, there was more room on the top half, but clearly I got to fix the bottom. It wouldn't be too difficult just to cut this all out and um, hammer it out and then put it back. I don't know. Let me know what you would do. Obviously, authenticity on this car makes uh, no difference to me. I'm just looking for sort of the best solution and how to get sort of the fuel system working kind of quickly. Also, I forgot to mention that I need to add a fuel filler to these tanks because I filled in the external fuel filler. So that has to be modified as well. That wasn't supposed to come out.